Hi, Jason here with Tech Labs. Uh, coverage of Computex 2014. We're here with uh, Micron slash Crucial. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming DDR4 release, uh, what you guys can look forward to in terms of performance, uh, prices, speeds, etc. Please tell me a little bit more about uh, DDR4. Sure. My name is Jeremy Mortensen. I'm a product manager at Micron CPG, uh, managing performance, memory, and also kind of commodity products. And today we're talking about our Crucial Ballistics Elite DDR4 um, announcement that we're coming soon. Um, and really, we're, it's, it's all part of the evolution of DDR technology. If you look, we have an infographic out on our site. Um, I'm sure you can post something out on your website as well. If you look at the technology starting in, you know, clear back in 2002, it's been a long time when DDR was introduced. We moved up to DDR2, and then 2007 we have DDR3, and when we became a DDR3, it was a 1066. When we moved to DDR4 now, interaction speeds are 2133. So server, standard desktop, you'll see 2133 modules initially. With the gaming performance stuff, we're expecting to do 2666 and 3000, and the spec actually goes up to 3200 megatransactions per second. So we'll see even faster speeds. And we expect overclocking as it matures in the next several years to, to go even further. You know, today we know with DDR3 we have you know up to 3,000 with some products out on the market, very expensive products, exactly. um, and it's hard to get to. With with ballistics, the 2666 and 3,000 is going to be much easier to get to, and you're going to run at lower voltages. Today to get those speeds, you've got to run 1.65 volt. Mm -hmm. As I'm noticing here, your original DDR uh, spec was introduced 2.5 volts, as you guys are all used to. DDR2 is 1.8, DDR3 is a standard 1.5. A lot of you guys are familiar with the gaming parts running 1.6, 1.7 is not abnormal. Um, and one of the things that you alluded to earlier was those 3,000 speeds, this 2,800 megahertz uh, sticks of RAM that you guys love to overclock with. Uh, the reason that those sticks are so expensive is because the yields are so low at that speed. So one of the things we were talking about is the introduction of, uh, of DDR4 at 2133, 2600, 3000 parts of being available, you're not going to see that price premium at 3000 megahertz, uh, megatransactions per second, because the yields are going to be, it, the DDR4 is already designed for that spec. Yeah, so when those parts come out, there'll be, there'll be a slight pre premium at launch for 2133. We expect there to be premium across them, but I think when you look at a, a 2666 or a 3000, it's going to be probably less than what you see for DDR3 parts today because they're just so hard to, to yield to and, and buy. So maybe that'll save you a little money for a graphics card or a processor or a different board or other features. Um, when but, when are, are we going to see DDR4 hit market? Well, you know, we're, we're a little ahead of the game. You know, we've, we've been kind of leading the charge with DDR4 and, and Intel's publicly announced there's an x99 platform coming. So it's the, their first eight core desktop processor. It's their first DDR4 platform. And they said second half. So we're mm -hmm. well prepared for that. We expect to ship, kind of in the, be ready to ship in that July August time frame, okay. um, with production parts. So you kind of see if there's that window of when the board guys and when Intel decides to actually launch X99, we'll be ready for it. And we'll have products for it. Um, you know, it really places what's X79 today. So you know, you're going to have quad channel kits. You're going to have better performing parts. And again, to your voltage point, you know, today to, to get to those speeds, you've got to push 165. Um, this is going to be 1.2 volt, and the overclocker parts. Should be 1.2. Maybe there's a little nominal increase. Again, it depends what the board guys and Intel allows to do based on the processor spec. It hasn't been completely released so yet. So are, are we looking at... It's going to be lower than what we see today. Easier to overclock RAM because it's lower I, voltages. I, What's the tolerance? I mean, what could we run? I, I think that's still dependent on the platform, right? Just, it'll still be platform dependent. You know how there's some nuances between X79 and now the new 97 chipsets? Right. You know, it, it really depends on that platform. With that said, Part of what we're saying is to reach those high speeds, it's easier to do. Today, mm -hmm. to, to get 3,000 or 2,800, you've got to kind of have the right bin processor, yeah. the, right, the right corner edge board that'll actually support that speed. The right, you got to do the right tweaking of the BIOS sometimes. You have to, maybe XMP doesn't always work at that speed, and you got to do some tweaking and loosening timings. Um, it's going to be easier to tame with XMP 2.0 on these boards because they're going to be designed in, uh, especially going forward in the next couple of years, you're just going to be able to get that speed easier. You're not going to be, have to be such the overclocking expert. Um, you're not going to have to pay quite that high a premium for those parts that are been that high, uh, just because that that spec builds in that 3,000 and 3,200. So, obviously, introduced being introduced to 2133, DDR3 was introduced to 1066. We now have 3,000 parts available. Where do you see this going? How high up? Well, we know the JetX specs 3,200, and I think there's some preliminary specs that go up into the up above that, maybe even the 4,000, but that's still to be determined. 
I don't see why it wouldn't. Again, just looking at history, right? Each of these parts have gone faster than what the spec said. Right. Especially when we can work outside the box, work with the board guys, work with Intel, do some fine tuning, play with voltages, play with timings and speeds, and, and, and as long as the parts are there, we'll hit. I think we'll go beyond that 3200. Uh, probably, but that's probably another year and a half out there, right? Uh, if you look at you look at the market transition, X99 is the first desktop platform. Mm -hmm. Really, the mainstream stuff's probably not till closer to 2016. So you may have, right. you know, you have this one chipset coming out now that's really for the enthusiasts and the gamers, um, and that'll go for a while. And then it's really up to the board guys, it's the Intel's, the AMD's, what they do on their upcoming platforms when they start to, you know, they have a normal cadence, and we'll follow that cadence. And that we really expect kind of that 2016 is where the the transition from the two technologies happen, just like we saw with DDR3 from DDR2 to DDR3, you know, we're in full stride. We're going full DDR3 today. That's not gonna be for a couple of years out with DDR4, uh, but it'll come and, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be ready for it. You know, we'll have a variety of products. We have the Crucial Ballistics Elite. We'll, we'll introduce our sports series. It's a little more affordable, uh, a little lower end speed wise. Um, we'll have our standard Crucial Jetic part, you know, no heat spreader, just the vanilla uh, 2133 at launch. So we'll have that as well. So we'll have the full gambit and then the benefits I think the consumer's really going to get lower voltage. They're going to get the higher bandwidth and speeds to kind of go along with the new processors. And I think long term, when you look at mobile platforms where there's integrated graphics, right, the frequency really directly equals frame rates on a lot of those yep. chipsets. So um, when you start pushing 3,000 megahertz DRAM in a, desk, a notebook, maybe in the next year, couple of years, right, that's going to benefit anybody who's doing some mobile gaming, maybe uh, the smaller platforms like the integrated and the BRICS and the, the Intel NUC. Um, you'll see some benefits there. And then the component density increases as well. Back when we launched DDR3, it was only a gigabit. Now we're four gigabit, even with DDR3. Right. Eight gigabits coming kind of 2015, beginning of 2015. So you'll start seeing 16 gigabyte individual modules. There'll be some DDR3 and DDR4, of course. Excellent. Um, so eight gigabit will become more mainstream, and that'll be on a future <laughs> platform release where that component. So you get higher density. Not as important if you got four to eight slots, right? Because you can load those up. But on a notebook that maybe only has one socket or your mobile device. Now you've got higher density and you're able to Yeah, tablets and things like there. that. Right. Yep. Micron's going to be help put more 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 density down on those integrated platforms. Just so another benefit longer term for the consumers that are out there. Excellent. Well, this has been a first look from Tecra Labs at DDR4 with uh, some crucial ballistics RAM. Uh, stay tuned for, of course, reviews on these products, techrelabs.com, and very shortly here we're going to take a look at Crucial's new MX100 drive. Stay tuned for more coverage from Techro Labs Computex 2014. Thanks. Stay right where you are. I want to make sure that you're in frame. Oh, okay. That's good back for me a little bit. You're fine. Okay.